Welcome back to the great outdoors, y'all. Today we are on the hunt for a coyote that has been hanging out at the Rackley Roofs. And before we get to trekking, I need to tell you about today's video sponsor, and that is Strapino. Strapino is a company that makes retractable ratchet straps. And this is something that every outdoorsman needs, whether you're towing your kayak, your boat, your ATVs, other outdoor equipment, just to keep in the truck, these things are super handy. We've all been there with traditional ratchet straps. They're long, they get into knots, they're flapping down the highway. That is not gonna happen with these Trapino straps. You can bolt these directly onto your trailer or you can use the extension straps like I'm using to take it to another thing that you need to strap down later. I know a lot of you are going to the deer lease right now and strapping down your coolers and your ATVs. This makes it really easy to get off the trailer quick and get to hunting. I love that they included clips onto the hooks and then also making a big lever, making it really easy to lock things down. They have these in marine grade, they have ones for ATVs, they even have smaller ones that are just for small stuff you wanna tow around in the truck or on the trailer. This is just one of those products that makes your life in the outdoor easier, y'all. They're, they're effortless, they keep your gear locked down, there's no knots, there's no mess, you just get things in and out of the bed or the trailer faster. So, link is down below for Strapino straps, they are available on Amazon. Now let's head to the woods where I'm trying to track down a coyote that has just fled the scene at my chicken coop. Okay guys, I'm pretty sure we just popped a coyote by the chicken coop. I came outside, I heard a ton of ruckus and I see a coyote doing circles around the chicken chicken coop trying to get in. He's jumping up, he's he's snapping at him. So I grabbed the pellet gun, came out here, I was on the top deck, and he stood right here. I got a shot off and then he yelped and ran this way. That's a fake coyote, don't worry. That's my one of my targets. Chickens are okay, chickens are good, but then I saw him kind of run this way, so I know I hit him pretty decently because he was yelping really hard, but I don't see him down anywhere. So this is definitely where he scuffled. You see the leaves all, oh, he's like doing circles right here. Oh, and there's blood. freaked out because I, I literally just I just popped this guy like I don't know 10 minutes ago it's pretty big I don't want him to like jump up and tag me or something <clears throat> screw it let's do it Big time, big time blood. I don't know where I hit him. Goes this way. Pretty sure I hit him in the dome. That's just weird for him to bleed this much. Oh, there's a dead rat that I shot, or a possum. Okay, now he's going on this trail. There's a little game trail right here. I see another big blood pile. I would be shocked if this thing got away. This much blood, this is a ton of blood. This is also like such a big coyote. Very big. Oh, shoot. Oh, super hairy back in here. Super hairy, oh my gosh. Look at this blood spot. Are you kidding me? thing has got to be down. And then it goes this way. Oh, it's going that way. It's going towards... It's definitely going towards my neighbors. Okay, I'm going to have to walk through some thorns right here. This thing could be like dead in my neighbor's yard or something. Oh my 
gosh, this is nasty. Nasty, nasty. I feel like I'm gonna look up and see it. It's just so much blood. I've killed deer with less blood. That big spot over here. Would be my first coyote. So, really not sure. They're a different animal. All right, I'm gonna backtrack to where I saw last blood and kind of get get a direction on it. here for just a second looked around okay. did not expect to be uh, tracking coyote blood at 7:30 in the morning after I just got home from a big hunting trip up at Flair's farm this was the last thing I was expecting okay across the creek right here didn't even get to fully enjoy my, my cup of coffee Yep, and there's blood spattering this way. I bet this thing's gonna go straight across. It's not even gonna go on the trail. Plugging up a little bit. Golly, how is this thing alive? So, we got a situation where animal can go downhill or can go uphill. Usually if they're wounded good, they go downhill. You would too. seen any traces going downhill. All right, last blood. Last blood's right here. He didn't cut up. I know he didn't cut up. Had to have gone straight across right here. All right, I think I got a little something here. Yeah, definitely. Here we go on the stem. Okay, now I see it on the rocks. Let's keep going. Oh, there's some ants starting to eat a tiny. 
tiny drop of blood right there. So we could have gone this way, actually. I've not seen those spots where he like stops and just bleeds. It's more like he's just on a steady trot. There's blood right here. I can't really see it, but I can see the ants. I can see the ants already going to it. Yep. That is blood right there. Very thin blood. You see that right here? The only reason I'm picking it up is because the ants. But I can see where the leaves the leaves have ruffled up where this animal's still struggling, it's just not bleeding. It's just those ants, those ants that are making it obvious. It just keeps going. Oh, now here's a little red blood. A little sign of life there. Just walked up a little bit, found some more random drops. Got all the ants on that. That's good stuff right there. <sighs> this is like so suspenseful. Usually how it goes when you hit an animal good is you can basically predict where they're going to go. You see little pathways, little game trails, the path of least resistance. This one just keeps going against that. Again. I, can just, I can see the little paw where he's just kind of trotting through here. Now we're back on that clear blood. We just got what we want. Maybe we got lucky. He's just laying over here. But in front of me, the woods are dark, deep. And I say we got no chance from here. We're at over 150 yards. If an animal's going over 150 yards, it's probably gonna live. Well guys, we went deep. I mean, over 150 yards. Zigzagging back to the woods, but hole plugged up, it happens. That was super, well not random, because I've had a coyote come to the chicken coop before, but like I said, I just got home. I heard the chickens going nuts. And I came out and the coyote was just doing its hurdles trying to figure out how to get in. And I also heard from one of my neighbors that the coyote was uh, like out during the middle of the day uh, trying to get our chickens while I was gone. So definitely don't like that with Emmy playing out here at midday. Um, just wanted to make sure that coyote's not going to come back. So I feel like my shot probably i mean i was going right for the center of the dome the, the coyote was like looking up at me on the third story as i was looking down as soon as i came outside i was like boop had like a few seconds to take a shot squeezed off and ar, 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 ran off into the woods and i'd had my my air force um sitting there like ready to go for rat hunting but sometimes when it sits for like weeks like it had been sitting for two weeks um with a uh, with a pellet in there it like the pressure just comes off it a little bit so I, f I felt like it still had good pop and uh, the Cody probably felt like it still had good pop but I don't know it's kind of a mystery I was this close to hitting record on the scope cam and then I was like I just need to shoot this thing because I literally have a second and then it's gonna take off, it sees me. If it would've been a bobcat or a fox, I wouldn't even care. I would just let it do its thing because I want those rats to be attacked. I want them to feel the pressure, but a coyote is a little different, especially a big one. The watch continues at the Rackley Roost here at the treehouse. Okay, so I've got a confession to make. Uh, we're gonna be working on a bow here are the rest of this video. Uh, I just got back from from hunting. I was I was hunting with uh, some of the Guggen guys. It was actually up at Flair's Ranch. And I oh my gosh, I was I was shocked that 
on his ranch, basically every other tree was an Osage tree. And you guys know that I've, my number one goal this year for out, my outdoorsman goal is to get a deer with a bow that I've made myself. So I thought I, I said I was done for the year. I'm done making bows. And then I got up there, I started doing a little archery hunting um, with my compounds, but then I saw the Osage wood and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to make another bow. And that is what I'm doing, y'all. So archery season is about to open here in Texas. Actually, by the time you're watching this video, it probably is open. And I am still working on a bow because I'm, I have the bow that I, it, man, it looks awesome. It, you know, it shoots good, this Osage bow. I had this two-year-old dried stave. Shout out to Austin. He gave me some, some staves. He's a local boyer. But it's loud. It's just loud, man. I've shot it so many times practicing with it, and I cannot figure out how to get it quieter. If there's somebody out there that's watching this, let me know in the comments down below what you think. I've already changed the brace height. I've taken it up to eight inches. It's just loud and that bugs me so bad. It takes away from the beauty of hunting with a, pr a primitive bow or a traditional bow. And these are all the bows that I've worked on this year, trying to get that one that is just special, that feels awesome that I'm gonna take in the woods. Anyway, this is a mulberry stave. Got this from, uh, from the same guy that gave me the, uh, the Osage. And I tillered it down threw a string on it, and I was like, I just want to see how this compares to, to Osage, and it is snappy, and it is so light, it feels great, and it's just a very simple flat bow, and you know what, that's what I'm going to take to the woods, because I've shot enough of these things to know like what feels real good in the hand, snappy, quiet, and that one just feels like it's a deer slayer. So to finish off this video, we're going to finish off this bow. I just need to sand it down, get that handle comfortable, put some leather on it, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna raw dog this one, y'all. I'm gonna go over the woods like this. I'm not gonna put a finish on it. I might put a little bit of uh, wax and fat on the belly, but I think I'm actually gonna back it with sinew after I get done hunting hunting with it this season. All right, plug it in a cheat code with the orbital sander. Don't judge me. We don't have a lot of time. My little buddy right here, little Ben. Uh. Yeah. Coming to check out the bow work. Uh. Yeah. Uh. You got those little curls back there, just like your dad. Already into power tools. Love to see it. Uh. All right, guys. I think our handle is where we want it. So I'm gonna wrap that up. Put a string on it. We should be able to shoot it. Okay, we're gonna put a little suede handle on here. Beautiful little buckskin color. All right, we got a fresh string. We got some arrows, and of course, we have our bow. With our new handle on it, it looks really good. I don't like the super light color. It's being inside of a dark blind, but that'll darken up with time. Don't think we have to worry about old coyote coming in the yard anytime soon. Okay. String it up. Don't break. Ah, yeah, baby. Oh man, that looks nice. It's about six inches brace height. Ooh, with string silencers. Sounded pretty good, y'all. The serving looks good, fits the arrow nice. I like 
knock it. Twist the string up just a hair more. Eighteen yards, I will take that all day. This is the one we're taking. It just feels right. It's so simple. Look at this bow. Just a flat bow. The big test though is with that flat bow, you know, that recurve, that kind of shortens up the space a little bit. You start curving those tips over, makes it a little easier getting inside the blind. That flat bow, we got a full, that's I think 61 and a half inches tip to tip. So that's pretty long when you're talking about getting inside the blind, creeping up, trying to get a shot. So I've got a brand new blind. I haven't set it up yet. I'm going to break it out and we're going to set it up right here. And then for shooting good inside of there, no issues. We're going to take that blind to the deer lease and hopefully repeat this process on a real animal. Got to get them close though. That's going to be the big challenge. First of all, you guys got to see this. First time getting in a blind like this. Look at this. Oh, yeah. 360, baby. Look at that. So the back wall is black. So that's backdrop. That's what we want. I want that to be very dark. And I've got a spot from last year. I think this will work in it. So I could back it up in some cedars. And we'll literally be able to see... All the way around us so film wise this is amazing this is gonna enable me to get away with a lot <sighs> got a nice little doe sitting out there she's got her visor on 10 yards this is it this is the scenario now i'm gonna have to cant the bow more than i usually do because of that top it's i can already see it's hitting the top and i can't get too low we're gonna have a close shot, so I kind of need to be on top of it. Pull forward. The way that I aim is I like I basically point the arrow right at the animal first, and then I'll draw back and try to stay still, keep that back tension. So, let's see here. Usually, if I'm squatting down, I shoot a little high. It's gonna be the tricky part right here. Oh, God, it sounded loud inside of this blind. Shot it right in the neck. That was a heart shot. I just have to, I have to adjust my aim. I need to practice this religiously. That's one of the big mistakes that I make, I think, in archery is I shoot my bow standing up a lot, but I don't shoot it like how I'm gonna be hunting in a weird position. You're usually like, you gotta lean, there's something weird. There's always something like that. It's something we should all practice. All right, guys, we had a decent grouping. Decent grouping right in the right in the hole where a rat chewed. But we got a high shot. You know, we got to account for a little ducking as well. So we got two lungs and one that might have touched lung if the deer didn't move, but I doubt it. So really want to aim like right there and count for a little squattiness. I need to do better. Let's not kid ourselves. Need to do better. Need to practice that. All right, y'all. I'm going to leave it there. Coyote tracking and bow making. The ways of the outdoors, I guess. There's always something going on here. It's crazy. Hope you guys subscribe to the channel and follow my journey to to do this, to get the, to get this deer. I mean, I'm, this is something that's been on my mind since I started making a bow um, about a year ago, the first one. 
and it's it's I mean now it's it's on my mind every hour so subscribe to the channel smash that like button for the great outdoors and I'll see you guys on the next one